it's so nice to see you here, uh, Bekina. Uh, we need, never had the chance to meet you in 2020 because of the pandemic, but we only met on different kind of Zoom and digital transitions, which was not the same as, as actually meeting and, and being able to talk to you like this. So I think most of you are very familiar with, with her work. I would just like to read a little bit of a description of, of her work first. Um, Bekina is, of course, one of Korea's most recognized picture book artists. Uh, and with the background in film animation, she has a unique visual style, uh, which features these handmade sceneries and figures that are lighted and photographed. She's published about 13 books, I guess it's correct. Um, I'm not sure, but around Let, that. Let's yeah. say 13, okay. And, and they, are, they have been published uh, throughout Asia, but also in, in other countries. And in Sweden, I, I often see your books in the bookshelves now, nowadays in, in different bookstores, which is absolutely wonderful, and uh, hopefully a, 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 an example of what awards can, can actually lead to. So, I have selected a few images. Let's see if we can go back to the, to the picture presentation. Uh, we thought it would be nice to be able to look at, um, just to start with, maybe a couple of images from your earlier production. Uh, you started with Cloud Bread, which yes. was published That's the around the very first book. The very first book. And if we just stay here for a while, I think already here you establish a very unique style. Uh, you're playing with materials and, and the kind of three dimensionality, but we can still in this book see kind of a play with the flat, flatness of the characters. Um, but something is really uh, taking place here that is, that is so exciting. So the story is about the family who eats cloud breads. Yes, they happened to pick up a cloud on the street because it was too, the, the, the rain was too heavy, the cloud got very heavy. So the kids pick up the cloud and then bring it to their mom. And the mother uh, decided to make a bread out of the cloud bread cloud. And they all, all get the ability to, to fly. fly. Exactly. And this book has actually been translated to very many languages. Yes, I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's familiar for many, many from the Asian area as well. Um, in the second book, uh, or maybe it's not the second, but one of the earlier ones uh, from 2010, um, it has a very interesting theme. And for those of you who have not read the book since 2010, please do. It really has a very current topic. It is so hot that the moon starts to melt. And a wolf lady who lives here on the, on the second floor creates a sorbet of the, of the melting moon and offers it to all the neighbors. Um, but it does resemble of, of the hot summers we are currently experiencing, so I do find that very interesting. Um, let's hop on. I wanted to give a few examples of the early production before we discuss the later books a little bit more. In last night, um, we uh, encounter different neighbors in different apartments. Uh, for example, rabbits and, and dogs and so on. Um, and as I think we actually have the book downstairs by the Alma, Alma desk over there. So if you want to take a look at it, it is, it is a Laborello book or yeah, a, a book that you can fold out, a fold out book. Um, and to me, it seems that even creating the book like that, it seems that everybody here is connected Right, right. Each other. I think the, the environment is going very uh, bad to survive for kids. I work really a lot. So I thought the only way that we could survive together is we bond together and our mm. relationship. So I wanted to make a story about it, like a butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I physically make the book connected. Each page is uh, mm -hmm. connected. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's positive and, and sometimes a little bit disturbing connections between the apartments in the book. For example, the dogs who like to sing are actually disturbing some of the right, neighbors. Right. <laughs> but here we also see some of the kind of part of handicraft in your books. You told me earlier that the little chocolate cake that we see on, in the image is actually hand-baked. 
Yes, yes, I made the, the cake uh, with paper mache, but it doesn't look delicious. So my, my <laughs> sister, she is really good cook, so she came over and baked a little miniature size cook, a cake. So, and then my daughter came back from school and she ate them all. <laughs> it looks even more delicious now that I know that it's actually a real cake. Okay, so let's move on. If we, if we think a little bit, oh, if we think a little bit of the, um, sorry, different themes uh, in your books, there is one, one theme that I find interesting, and that is meetings between children and adults and children and elderly people. Um, and you often include elderly characters, and I think this is not always the case in children's literature, where the focus is often on young, young people and their mothers and fathers. Um, could you tell me how this is significant for you? I think um, the elderly people are more connected with um, the children because the parent generation, they have to take care of the real problem, right? But on the contrary, all the elder people, they can think of furthermore things because they have exper more experience through mm -hmm. their lives. And also, they seem to have more secret stories to mm. tell little kids. So I think elderly people and children have a strong bond to each other. Mm -hmm. And here, if we look at the technical side of it, I, I see that you have worked with these little sculptures or these little figures. But we do also, also have actual water. Was it difficult to create this image? Yes, we, we went to the real public bath place and then we shoot in there. Of course, we had to use the electricity for lighting. It was quite dangerous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a hot summer. It was quite hard to work, but mm -hmm. luckily I had very good um, steps from published house. Mm -hmm. So we worked together and, and it was fun. I think it's, it's wonderful and it really creates such a strong sense of uh, bathing and the warmth of the water and actually also at this kind of meeting w between these two characters in very different phases of their lives. Let's move on. Uh, I was thinking we could look a little bit more of Magic Candies, which is a little bit later. It came 2017. Um, could you tell me a little bit about this book? Um, there is a, a lonely boy and who plays by himself all the time. Mm -hmm. he, he likes to play with the marbles. And the only one who, who is next to him is the dog. And then one day he went to his favorite um, grocery store mm -hmm. and then he wanted to buy new marbles. And then he found some, but the, the owner said, it's not marbles, it's delicious candies. <laughs> you should try. And then he tried them and then I he suddenly started hearing some strange voices from everywhere. Let's see, I think I have that image. There we go. Something happens here. So they show, th we find out that they are magical candies and he can hear voices of both thoughts of people, um, the animal voices. He even um, talks with his grandmother, who is not there anymore, or? Yes, yes. yes. We can imagine that way, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the magic candy is supposed to be mint and it's so strong that he feels that his ears and nose and mouth is, is exploding. Popping, yes. yes, yes, popping. <laughs> and then he suddenly start to hear some voices from, from stuff or, or animals and mm -hmm. yeah, from heaven maybe. Let's see, now I have one image here. It's also very interesting from the illustrator's perspective that we have this interesting connection of the text, which is now handwritten and, and placed almost like mu musical notes in the room. Uh, and at the same time, the image is, um, it's included in the image in a very interesting way. Yes, I want the text to be a part of the illustration also. Mm -hmm. And I think I have one more page, but I, I wonder if this is in some kind of um, proof or is it the early tra translation of the English or is this the final version? I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like English. Yes. And the, the, the dog's dialogue is in Korean. Yes. A mixture now. So this is an elderly dog and this, this actually creates a, a meeting between the, the dog and the boy that surprises the boy in a way. He sees the dog in a new perspective after yes, this. Yes. Okay. Since they lived together for years, it's the first time they, they 
they have conversation mm. and they start to um, understanding each other because there was some misunderstandings between them. So you have quite many animals in your stories. Um, uh, they have very central place, and I, I must say that they are very finely and nuancedly portrayed. Like this dog, you can really uh, feel feel that he's a, he's a character of his own. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about this? Why, why are why do you prefer to work with animals sometimes? Right, right. I love to work um, with animals, <laughs> not work with animals, but use animals as the <laughs> characters. Yeah. Uh, many reasons. First, um, they are cute, of course, <laughs> cuter than human being, I think. And and besides that, there are some advantage of using animals as a character in the picture book. Um, I think I can avoid, I can hide the sexuality and, and age, things like that, mm -hmm. um, when I use animals. Um, so that I could avoid giving our children some bad stereotypes, uh -huh. like if adults should con behave like this, or ladies or, or girls should behave like this, or certain age people should behave like this. Mm -hmm. I, I want to um, avoid those mm. harm. So, the, for example, the gender is more vague or more neutral. Exactly, yes. yes. I understand, yes. Let's see, I, I believe... We, I, I, I am very sorry, we have picked many pictures with dogs. Um, I didn't mean to, but they are, it, felt, it felt so nice to, to lift this book as well. I am a dog from 2019, and we do recognize the dog from the previous book. Is it the same character? Yes, same character. So this is the story before the magic candy start. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we have some images. So I, I was thinking here, maybe we could take a look at how you work, because you have a very special technique. Um, and I do think you have background in animation, and a lot of your books seem to have uh, traces of what I would say almost filmic uh, vi visuals or stage-like constructions. And I think that this mix is, is really, really, really fascinating and very unique for you. So I was thinking maybe we could look at this exact image and see how you have worked with it. We have a short uh, film clip and it's no sound. Uh, it's maybe 30 seconds or 40 seconds. And I think it shows in a wonderful way how you build the character uh, and how you work step for step with it. Let's hope now that it works. Let's see. Oh, this is the one from, we can see the image from how it looked like when you have yes. photographed it in the, in the room. And now let's see if the film works. Uh, do you think I can? Yes. So we have a small model and then you're building it more with like a sculpture. It gets color. And now I see the lighting is something that you are adding. Yes, I, I are, of course I start from the sketches and then I want the final image exactly the same as the sketches, especially the composition mm -hmm. wise. So um, I keep um, testing out the photograph of the stage and the puppets. So while I am make, building the, the stage, the, the set, mm -hmm. um, and while I am making the puppets, I keep uh, photographing them together so that the final photograph or final image could be exactly the same as the, my sketch. Okay, so let's see it again. I think it's so fascinating. Yeah, so this is uh, um, the sequence, the photos, series of photos. I just put all the tested shots together in time base so that we could see the whole process of making the image. I must say, when I see this, I think it's amazing. It must take very long time for Very long to, time. Yes. So how long time would it take you to do this scene, for example? Do you know? Or? Um, it depends on the, on the image, how complicated the image could be. Mm -hmm. And this scene was very important to shot from the whole story. So I might say it took maybe three weeks oh. to finish. Yeah, first time I wanted to shot inside of the room, so I tested out many different kind of lighting. But to be honest, I'm not a professional photo mm -hmm. photographer, so I don't have the expert 
um, knowledge in lighting, so I couldn't get the right lightness in, in the photo. I wanted to be um, early, like noon, mm -hmm. Cause the grandmother, after taking the taking the dog to the for a walk, and then she had to pick up a little boy from the kindergarten, mm -hmm. so it should be around one o'clock in the afternoon, and the lightness, the, the sunlight should look like one o'clock in the afternoon, oh. and I tested out so many light conditions, but I couldn't find the right lightness that I wanted that I was looking for, so I decided to use the real sunlight. So I move everything, every set, every puppet, including big desk and camera, everything, move up to the roof and then shoot there with oh, the sunlight. Wow. And the, sometimes the, the wind blows and so, the set <laughs> fall down. <laughs> and then the sun goes from, goes fr moves from west to, to the east and yeah. the, the shadow changes, but the shadow is very, important part of the yes. image is it, it makes the it yeah. makes a difference in the whole composition right so you can see it here yes it, it was very tough but when i got the final image then i was really really happy i think it's amazing i'm so impressed <laughs> and, and and besides the the the, the dog's paper it should be shining because yes. it's very exciting moment after long waiting for a walk. So I, I want that reflection of light in the, in the dog's eyes. That was very important for me. Yes, I think it's wonderful. And I think it's also a very good example of how you put the animal um, in the forefront in, in this book. And it is a character. It is not just a generic animal. Um, and I, I, I'm amazed that you thought about the time of the day, of course. That is, of course, something one should do because there's a warmth in the in the color and in the lighting that resembles of the afternoon afternoon light. Uh, that's so fascinating. Let's see if we can jump over the film and not see it again. Uh, no, it does. I'm sorry. Just close <laughs> your eyes if you don't want to see it one more time. A short break. But I do think that it tells what what an incredibly hard work you put into these kind of details. Um, and also creating the the, the setting uh, around uh, with all the details, like the metal rain. Um, I'm not sure what you call that that metal thing, or, or the signs, uh, or the post on on the on the right side. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so uh, the story, which I thought was very touching, is is about this dog who comes to the family. And this actually takes place before the magic candy. So the dog is, is tiny, it's a puppy. And it is an interesting perspective because it tells about the dog's experience of coming to a new home. And days like when the, when the family is away, how he's feeling lonely and, and sits by the door and just waits and waits and waits. And, and it feels like it takes forever before anybody comes home. But you also very nicely, um, worked with this, um, the motive of parenthood in a way here. And, and there are, is a thoughts about who, who's, who his mother or father. I mean, mother we know, but who is the father in the story? And tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the mother though, actually, uh, she used to be our family. She always, of course, passed away. She lived with us like, 14 years, so I spent almost of my childhood with her. She's like oh. my sister, and she exactly looked like the dog that I made. Mm -hmm. And that's her real story. She was, <laughs> she had quite many marriages, and she had <laughs> quite many puppies, almost the 30s. So it's a real story. And then when I came to make those all different kind of dogs, mm -hmm. I needed a real model. So I used the SNS Twitter and mm -hmm. asked people to send their dog's photograph, photos okay. sitting in front. And, and, and oh. they, every owner sent me their dog's photos with their name on it. And then they descri described um, about their dogs. 
I uh, happened to meet this dog on the street and then it became our, my family, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. And then the photograph was taken by the owners. Okay, so let's see. So this is the dog called Kodori? Kodori, this yes. This is Kodori yes. and this is the real Kodori. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wrote down on, on the book that it has its real name on it. And then the owners found out um, their dogs from the book or yeah, photos so and they were really happy to see their so dogs. So Kodori is in the book. That's amazing. Okay. Maybe you can tell that both of us have had dogs. I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm biased, biased to this. But I do think it's interesting how you also open the work process and, and, and actually include real dogs, real dog owners and kind of a connection to them yes, in creating. Yes, yes, yes. If I have a model or if I uh, have a base on the real world and it's totally, um, totally different, make a totally different many things. Mm. Like if I just imagine and, and make up something, that's totally different from if I have a real good reference. Mm. Yes. So you find it stimulating in your work process? Yes, yes. And, and readers can, can see the difference. Mm. That's interesting. Let's see. A couple of more. Here are a whole plate of plate of dogs. It's a cuteness overload. Let's see. Because the, the photos of the dogs were taken by the owners. The dogs were looking at not just the camera, they were looking at the owners. Yes. So I could see the, the <laughs> true love from their faces and their eyes. <laughs> so when I make puppets, I can show the, the love from the dog. It That's was wonderful. amazing. That's yes. amazing. So let, let's get back to the story. I just chose this one. It's one of the final images. Uh, and tell me a little bit about this solution. Why is the boy sleeping on the balcony with the dog? <laughs> because the, um, the dog uh, made a mistake. He put food on the, on the boy's bed. So the, the, the boy's father was got so angry. And as a punishment, uh, he trapped the dog at the balcony and he couldn't get out of it. And he felt so lonely and then the boy came out to, to sleep with the, the dog. Mm. That's amazing. So even in this book about the dog, I would say that the, um, the theme of loneliness and relationships is here and you have it in, in many other stories as well. And you seem to put a lot of trust in your characters and in your readers. Um, do you have a specific reader in mind when you write books for children? Um, I'm not sure, but if there is, I think it could be me, yeah. because I always um, reflect myself on the story. I have to reflect my own feelings and experience on in the story. Then the story can be true. And besides that, I think um, to me, um, I'm an entertainer rather than an mm. artist because um, I think much about, a lot about the readers while I am making books. Mm. Would they feel happy? Would they feel, would, would they laugh? Or would they feel, feel sad on this, this scene? I do my best to entertain readers through the whole process of making books, especially my main target would be um, three to five years mm. kids, mm -hmm. yes. Now you, you say you feel a bit like an artist, but, but when did you know that you wanted to tell stories, that you wanted to create stories? I never imagined myself being an, uh, a writer, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I, when I was little, I draw a lot and, and play with doll all the time. Mm -hmm. And while I am playing with dolls or draw, I, th I always think of, I always imagine stories. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of playful time led me to be a picture book maker. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, so did your ma parents give you materials or, or support you in that kind of? Yeah, I storytelling so. and drawing. Yeah, uh, when I was little, there wasn't many things to entertain myself like these days, playing mm. games. Mm -hmm. And and I remember um, my mother gives me a big piece of paper. Then I spend the whole day drawing on it. I 
fill it up the whole paper with drawings. Yeah. And how, how have you changed your view on, on the picture book medium? As we see from the kind of development that has taken place from the beginning to, to, to the, for example, this book, um, what has changed in your way of working? Changes of my yes. work in the medium or, or yes, because we see that in the early books, you uh, some of the materials oh, are very visual. We can see like um, button eyes, and and we can see that that they are kind of flat and and two dimensional. And and here I'm almost thinking sometimes it's almost filmic or like a theater scene. So so it has changed. Is it mostly technique? Do you think that right. you have developed? Right, right. I, I used to be an animator before I became picture book maker. Mm -hmm. So um, I studied in, in art school and an animation major, and I could uh, audit in theater classes and mm -hmm. filmmaking classes, things like that. And, and to me, um, I, I try many different ways for different stories every time when I come to new stories, I try to change the medium and styles, even though the readers cannot notice, mm -hmm. because um, I choose the medium and the styles to, to find the best way to tell the story. Mm -hmm. What to tell in the book is, of course, important, but how to tell the story is even more important, yes. mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. yes. I so every element in the picture book, in the illustration, lighting, and everything, that all work together to tell the story. Mm. So in 2020, you, you received the ALMA Award. Has it changed your way of working or your, your work situation in any way? I believe so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, getting a, a world, ALMA Award was like literally dream came true. Yes, and, and um, it gave me many possibilities. For example, um, I could finally give myself some credit for being efficient through all my careers, working careers, mm -hmm. which means now um, I think, I feel that I, um, I could be more brave and give myself some room to breathe more and, and explore more, even furthermore. So, which means even I'm middle-aged, <laughs> I think I can grow even more from now. Mm, that's wonderful. I think we have 10 minutes left, so maybe we could open the floor for questions uh, to Bekina. There are two microphones here, as you know, and let's just maybe start and, uh, and hear if, if there are, is anybody interested in asking a question? Yes? <laughs> Hello, my name is Saida, and I come from Uzbekistan. Hello. And I just discovered you, and I think this is amazing. Thank you. Um, and the first thought I had, that's looking at me, the first thing I, uh, I thought was, oh my God, it must require a lot of patience to do one image. Uh, did you, uh, when you started, did you lose uh, ever patience and stop doing it, or it never happened? Like you naturally have so much energy, patience to do such a t tedious. Is it tedious? Yeah, yeah tedious. Yes. Tedious work. As I said, I used to be an animator, which means I have to draw almost um, twenty-four or twelve to twenty-four drawings per one second <laughs> compared to being an animator. This is a lot easier than <laughs> animation. <laughs> and I think I could be, uh, I am very sensitive person to be honest, but I could be very dull sometimes, it depends. But when I work on something 
and if there is a certain thing that I want to achieve, then I think I forget about everything and I just put everything to to achieve that goal. I think that's part of my personality. Mm -hmm. So I can say that as long as my health condition allows, I don't give up. <laughs> Thank you. And quick other question: What do you What do you do with all your characters once you're done um, working on a book? Uh, they are all in my closet. <laughs> so it can become a museum one day. Maybe one day, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Heidi. I'm from Malaysia. Thank you so much for that. I'm a big fan and I love your work. Um, I just wondered about your process. Uh, you, you actually write and illustrate, well, you create the illustrations for your book. Uh, what comes first? Do you write the story? Uh, do you think about the story uh, in terms of sort of text? Or do you visualize the story uh, in terms of the artwork and then bring it together? How, how's your process? Yeah, mostly I start up with the story first because I think the story is the most important part. And and just one, there was just one exception, the, the animal pup, the animal stuffed mm -hmm. doll's story last night. That was the only book that I came up with the characters, puppets first, and then I come up with the stories. So story first. And usually how long does it take for you to complete the whole process of uh, putting the book together? It's, it's hard to tell because, as I said, the story is the most important part. So I took a long time to come up with the story and finish the story. So sometimes it takes 10 years, like Magic Candies, for example. Yes. I came up with a different story. The first version of the Magic Candy story was a uh, love story, but it <laughs> changed it now. And I kept that story for, for 10 years because I didn't really like it, satisfied. And then after 10 years, I came up with some different ideas so then I could finish the story. So it depends on the story, but the making, the, the process of making the visual part almost a year to finish for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before I, I let you ask, ha, the, the house from last night, do you still have it? Because I've seen images of this huge house that the last night with all the building, uh, the apartments. Oh, you mean the moon sherbet? Oh, moon sherbet, yes, 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 yes. moon sherbet, sorry. Yeah, the, the lighting is all off. So okay, it's, but it still <laughs> exists. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in my studio now. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay, sorry. Hello, my name is Jia, I'm from China. Um, as you know, a lot of your books are introduced to China and there are many fans in China. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking some questions from my friend. Um, one is an illustrator and she wanted to ask for an illustrator who is just entering the field, do you recommend um, to work full time? Because you know it's very poor <laughs> and it's hard to get like a lot of work, but do you recommend that she become a full-time illustrator or doing part-time illustrations when she just start her, her career? Her career. Uh, start her career as a, yeah. as a f filmmaker? Uh, illustrator. Uh, illustrator, uh, and, and she is wondering if she could choose to be a full-time job or yeah, a part-time yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's totally up to her. I mm. think maybe she could start with part-time job and eventually move on to a full-time job, yeah, to be safe, yeah. maybe. But I think it's totally <laughs> up to her. To me, uh, to me, the when you say someone got talent, I think that means if she, she or she is ready to devote their lives to their work or not. I think ta being talent means effort. Thank you. And another question is about, have you ever think about how to differentiate fantasy element and reality in your picture book? Like, do you use any particular way to differentiate fantasy and the reality in your story? Oh, rather than fantasy yeah. and make a more realistic story? Yeah, yeah. I think, 
I think we are already um, surrounded by the real world. So um, I don't want to experience again in my book <laughs> the real <laughs> world. So I like something that has little fantasy, but it's connected with the real world, more believable fantasy, not a huge imaginary fantasy. I like little magic that m we might could reach. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, yes? One more. Hello. Um, my name is Maria. We can't hear you. Oh. My name is Maria. I'm an illustrator from South Africa. Your work is incredible. I'm such a big fan. I wanted to ask you, when you're coming up with a story, where do you take inspiration from? I find it quite difficult to finish a story because I'm never quite satisfied with it. And I think you mentioned that that's also an issue in one of your books that you wrote. Um, where do you draw inspiration when you write your stories? There is no inspiration, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Um, it's, it's really hard to finish a story. Mm. I think we have to uh, put ourselves on the desk. Maybe we have to tie ourselves on the chair and the squeeze our brain to, <laughs> <laughs> to get the story. I think it's a matter of time. We have to put time and energy to, to come up with the story. We expect a brilliant idea or inspirations just come to us and then finish the story right away, but it never happens, we have to admit. We have to put certain amount of time and effort to finish a story, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I think a regular work, everyday regular work is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I think maybe this is a good note to, to, to finish our, our conversation. How much hard work for both authors and illustrators lies behind every children's book. We should never forget that. It's, it's a lot of work. So thank you so much. Uh, this was a wonderful and very interesting discussion with you. Good luck with future projects, whether books or other things. And thank you so much. Thank you for giving me a chance to share all my <laughs> words with people from all over the world. It's a very glorious moment. Thank you.